So any thoughts about uh, Mr. Bobby Martin and his journey? Any, any insights? I really liked what he did with the photos. It looked a little bit like, <clears throat> you know how we've done, we go into Photoshop and change some, change the images around. It, like, it looked like he might have started with a very high contrast turned it into a high contrast image and worked from there. That's just the impression I got. I don't, you know, I don't know that, but it looked similar to that. It was very interesting. It did. I like the gold leaf. It just, mm -hmm. it did add a different kind of something to it, texture or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, and I, yeah, I would be interested in trying that, you know, with the gold leaf. I've done it and I really enjoy working with it. It's a pill, you know, it's a pill to fiddle with, but the F, the effort, it's worth the effort, but you I do have to seal it or it will yeah. turn. I did, I did, I've done more than on a few pieces, but one of them I didn't seal and it turned and I've got to do the gold leaf all over it. Um, it's a lot of fun. And it's one of those things that when you're ready to do it is when you go get the YouTube video, because if, yeah. we, talk, if we talk about it now, we won't have any clue when it comes time to do it. It's like, what did we say? Because I think we yeah. talked about this before and what, yeah, we did. what different people use to apply it. Beautiful. You know, um, any other thoughts? I mean, one of the things I wrote down and I'll, maybe this will spark something is how important physical places can be and how he, he came across that photo it made me start digging. Um, he said there was there are stories in those photos that can be brought out. And I thought, you know, there are. And it made me go back through because I have folders and folders. I'm the genealogy keeper of our family. And I went back through and just looked last night. In fact, I didn't get as much done on this as I wanted to because I got sidetracked. But I saw things I had never seen pulling them up on my computer. I looked at the things in the background and the houses and the expressions and it was just it was almost like having a new set of eyes after watching and listening to him it really inspired me he, one of the things he said was surrounded by these women um, these treasures in my life women who had prayed for me um, and just how he wanted to stay there you know probably you know glancing at that picture you would go oh but to look a little deeper and to see his expression of contentment, um, you know, remembering it adds, I, I've told you all that before, as I watch my dad and when he recounts his old days, you know, and we have to be patient with him because he'll tell the stories over and over, but I can see that it actually seems to add health to him to remember. It's joyful sometimes to remember. Denise, did you have a thought there? I was, I was just going to say, there is an artist that I follow. I've, I'll have to look up the, her name and try to post it on our class page. But she actually takes the old photographs and cuts them in, in whatever way she want, form she wants to use them. But she actually uses the, an actual photograph to make the artwork out of. It's really interesting to me. Wow. That's what I thought he was going to do. Of collage. Yeah, that's what I thought he was going to do. I didn't know he drew them out. So, yeah. And there was a Sorry. little segment in there. I, did, I didn't catch it this time. I must have been writing, but where um, it, the, it was drawing over the photograph and it looks like he transferred it. So, you know, I'm thinking with a lot of these pictures that I want to do in a sketchbook, I may just transfer them and then do my own sketch, you know, to them do my own embellishing but to sit there and try to draw them I'll get bogged down if especially if there's 10 figures and I'm drawing them you know there's their heads the size of a dime um that I may do that in my sketchbook and that's you have to really nice. think about when you're doing something like that mm -hmm. you really have to think about how you're going to invest your time yes because you know if you're doing something with 10 figures in it and you, you see what your purpose is not uh, sharpening your skill. It's just putting a memory putting in memory. your sketchbook. Yes. <clears throat> so, I, you know, to draw 10 people, uh, you're yeah. just going to, you're going to run out of time and get discouraged. And so you have to decide what, what the purpose is. Yes. But yeah, I can see transferring it sometimes too. 
and it makes me excited to think about doing it. It doesn't feel so overwhelming mm -hmm. to yeah, think about doing it because I can do you that. You get easily. to the fun part quickly. You get to the fun <laughs> part. And it's for me, you know, it's not, that's the new part of my life right now. I'm not feeling like I have to paint for money. I have to do classes for money anymore. I feel like I'm doing it because for the joy of doing it. Um, and I'm really changing my thinking about what I'm, what I want to invest my time doing, what I want to leave here because we are leaving our art here. I don't think there's much way we can pack it up and take it with us when we go. Um, yeah, Teresa. Well, you remember when I painted the my grandparents old house. Yes, there were like a, it was a family reunion, apparently, and there must have been 50 or 60 people standing in front of this house. And that was the first thing my granddaughter, who's just turned 14, asked me. She said, are you going to paint all those people? <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, ma'am, I am not. My <laughs> whole goal, and my cousin asked me to do this, was to capture that house because the house was leveled about 10 years ago and it's no mm -hmm. longer there. So we only have very, very old photos. I'm talking 30, 40, 50 year old photos, well, probably maybe more than what, older than that. So, you know, it was just a way to capture that house and it made her so happy for me to paint that for her. So, but it was a way to remember because all the stories we heard about the farm and the cotton fields and, you know, all the sweet personal stories about the kids and playing under the porch and all of that was just, precious to me so I just that was part of that was the only reason for painting that and of course it was just an old house <laughs> so. right right but it's so precious to your family and you yes. you've recorded something for posterity as well you know um I, I I don't think we we realize fully um what that means I was trying to find an image one of our uh, some of us knew Jerry no Jerry Grubbs was a member of Monhaven and he did a poor, he did a painting of a church reunion, uh, dinner on the grounds, it was called. And I was trying to find that to share it with you because it had a similar feeling. If you've ever been to a, a church um, covered dish dinner or, or dinner on the grounds or a homecoming celebration, they called it. You know, I remember going to those when I was a kid. Um, so, you know, these are special things that evoke memories and they connect us all because we all have a lot of shared experiences. You know, I have pictures of us standing out in front of a house too. It, you know, the whole family and the kids are there and they look, you know, little bitty down there with all the adults hovering over. So yeah, they're shared experiences. Um, awesome, thank you for those. And, and um, I hope again to, to inspire you on to more, uh, a different direction with your art maybe or some ideas that you hadn't thought about. Any other thoughts about that? And I wanna move us on to. Oh. <laughs> You know, I was going to say, it seemed like it would be fun to do the collage thing instead of drawing them all out. You know, I'm, I'm agreeing with, uh, with my sister here, but yes. <laughs> oh y'all, my sisters yes, uh, and, and the brother and the yes. brother, the brother today. Okay. So anyway, no, I'm enjoying that. it. Uh, so I wanted to share a couple of resources for you as we get started. Um, this one is um, from the UVA Frolin University of Virginia Frolin Art Museum, I believe. Changing one. Um, but they had a little bit of background. This is the only place I could find background on interior paintings. And it said the landscape was the main theme in Western painting um, in the early, uh, early part of the century. And after the Industrial Revolution, the interior became more prominent. Artists began to depicting windows into other rooms instead of painting views of the outside world. So what was behind this? Uh, so I, I, you know, I summarized it down a little bit, but one of the things was the atrocities of war and their resulting psychological damage um, led modern artists, other things, led modern artists to paint visually and psychologically stimulating spaces. And I think we can all relate to that right now with the news, everything that's going on in our world. It, nothing's new under the sun. We've had these same types of things, but it just weighs down on you. And so as artists to be able to, to paint something beautiful and visually stimulating is um, certainly uh, our desire, most of us our desire. Um, the other thing that's mentioned in this article is um, how some artists present a documentary, a documentary 
style of inventories of their surroundings. And then other artists create fantastic or imaginative. I'm not sure I'm saying that right. It sounds funny. Um, imaginative interiors. Um, but the last little part of this article said that interior spaces unpeopled allow us to imagine our own physical bodies in the space, as well as our emotional and intellectual responses to how we feel when looking at that space. Invited, welcomed, voyeuristic, apprehensive, or hesitant to enter. Um, the interiors perhaps reveal more about us, the viewer, than they do the painter's intent. Um, so just a, a little bit of a preview about interiors and, you know, again, I've never stopped to think about it. Um, the different styles, um, insights into a past life, to room decor, trends, people's lifestyles, and of course the state of mind of the artist who created them. Uh, these are just wonderful insights into the past and artsy.net. This is um, about six paintings of interiors and uh, designers have recreated those rooms and they kind of morph into the painting. So I think you will enjoy this if I can make it work as well. Uh, the first one is Van Gogh's room. And it, it's just kind of cool to look. Um, let me scoot it down a little bit here. So this particular site gives you um, the, the actual painting, the bedroom by Vincent van Gogh. Can everybody see that okay? And then a little uh, uh, detailed description. And then the, the recreation of the room by designers. Um, and then the third image actually shows it morphing. What a neat website, what a neat idea to do that. And let me share with you the, the description of that. It says the painting known as the bedroom depicts Van Gogh's room in the French town of Arles. The, um, no, I'm saying that wrong. The artist himself described this painting as the evocation of peace and relaxation. The bedroom features simple wooden furniture and his own artwork on the walls. The use of strong contrasting colors and claustrophobic walls tend to evoke the rest or sleep that he experienced in his bedroom. Any thoughts about that? The light coming in the window is definitely, I mean, they, they recreated it down to the, the last detail. The second one is by Roy Lichtenstein. Um, a little bit more of a modern or definitely a modern type painting. And here is the recreation of the room, the pop art movement. Um, it says unrestfully. His living room quite unrestfully is, is visualized. I don't know what that means. It doesn't feel unrestful to me. And here's the morph. Here's one by Ken, Wassily Kandins, Kandinsky. Am I saying that right? Had an exhibit of his work here a few years ago. This is at a time when he was evolving from figurative to abstract art. And this is his dining room. Um, and then here's the... Here's the morph. This is another one by Konstantin Korvin. Um, it's his kitchen from 1913. He was a uh, Russian impressionist painter and bare walls, wooden floor, soft pastel colors. And here's the morph. Kind of goes fast. It's hard to see that. They all have such a different um, feel to them, don't they? Based on the style and the colors. Uh, this is by Grant Wood called The Sunshine on the Corner. Kind of a dull, dreary, old masters type of, um, of style of paint. Very dark. And look how bright this recreation is. I guess it's, it's hard to have a window and light coming in and, and it be so... So dark and dreary, and here's the morph of it. If I can make it do it again, there it goes. And then I think one more, this is Empress Alexandra Fyodorovna's sitting room in St. Petersburg, Russia, by artist Edward Petrovich 
how I'm just butchering all these names. I apologize. This is his sitting room at Cottage Palace in St. Petersburg. And gosh, how'd they recreate that? Maybe they went there. I don't know. And here's the morph. I'm probably going too fast for you guys, but I just thought that was pretty cool the way they did that. It was a lot of work to recreate those interiors. Um, um, it's there. It's in several. You can find it real easy. Just put uh, designer famous paintings, rooms, interior rooms, and you'll find it. it was um, uh, there's a YouTube video. Uh, by Ephraim Rubenstein. This is the only video that I could find on painting interiors. And he's from the Art Student League. It's a, a lecture. It's about an hour long lecture. And he has some really good insights. I'm going to, if we have time, I'll show you a couple of little clips of what he's talking about. But, um, and then there's another little video by Ben Finsky. These are both on YouTube and I'll make these available to you to watch. This is just a trailer for a, a uh, workshop or I don't know if it's an online zoom class or what but this is um his he talks about interiors and it it's it's interesting so those were the um links that I wanted to share with you guys and then this next segment I was just going to kind of go uh like we did last time a little gallery walk and just look at some because that's the way to learn for me is to look at what other people have done and decide what I like and what I don't like maybe what my impressions are, and to introduce you guys to some artists that you maybe have never heard of. The majority of these I have never heard of. Some elements. Uh, I've divided them into a couple of different um, segments like bedrooms and bathrooms and kitchens and hallways and porches and living rooms. Um, so you, you kind of see a whole wide variety of different interior paintings. Some include windows, some do not. Some focus on doorways. And, and some of the meaning behind doorways and, you know, just the way you create some tension or the way you create a connection with people with your interior paintings. So I invite conversation for this segment. Um, I'll move kind of quickly through them. I do have an exercise. Um, this is a really helpful exercise. And it's basically one point perspective. Um, and I, I think I'll go ahead and do, yeah, Jackie had to go. I got, I'll go ahead and do the gallery walk and we'll come back to this because this will take some time for us to do it. But it is really helpful for you and for me to do this, putting that X through the middle of the room to start and then drawing that one point perspective. And then all of your furniture and rugs, everything goes into that vanishing point according to that one point perspective. Now you can make the room as deep or as shallow as you want by picking this inner square. Has anybody ever done this exercise before or done one point perspective? Okay, so I thought this is really the only teaching information I had about interiors, uh, but I thought this would be real helpful. Um, this first one, Wilhelm Hammershoy. I heard a lot of discussion about him in the couple of videos that I watched. So that was one of his main themes. And of course, this window with the light coming in is um, the main part. Now, it's a little intimidating to think about putting a figure in, but the figure brings it to life and adds to the story. So there's a, I have a couple of examples of women reading or looking at something in interiors. So that seems to be a common thing. This one by Elizabeth Hoops is quite colorful and you, it looks like a watercolor and you don't really see the light streaming in. You see evidence of the light on this back wall, uh, but there's a lot going on. It's, it's really a still life within many still lifes within an interior. That is why um, my first teacher, Daniel Green, one of my first teachers, um, said that really to be a portrait artist you need to learn everything still life landscape because you're going to be in situations where you're going to have a figure in they're going to have still life around them they're going to be in a landscape setting so the more you learn about diff these different genres the better this one on the left frederick audino is the one i sent out in my newsletter i think it was one of my favorite ones 
Uh, I love the purples and yellows, the complementary colors. That that lavender and that green, yellowish green are are secondary on the color wheel. They look beautiful together. And then the just the light and the the um, the throw there is inviting. Um, going through a doorway is another invitation. And I think that when you invite someone into your painting so that they can imagine themselves in the space, um, what are your thoughts about either one of these, the light in the rooms, the colors? I love the one that you just talked about. That is just so beautiful. I just want to go in there and sit down. <laughs> yeah. The, the reflections are just, the light and reflections are just, and shadows are gorgeous. Even look at the in the uh, the door where the hinges are, that that light that's coming through, uh, the reflective nature of the floor in the foreground there, um, the little pieces of light that lead your eye around the painting. Um, I, this was probably one of my favorites of all that I looked at. I just really thought this was beautiful, but it it kind of um, reminds us to look beyond just a corner of the room. You you kind of stopped when you just think about a corner, but when you actually going through a doorway and then also going through a window, there's a landscape out here as well. You're, you're taking the viewer through a foreground, a mid ground, a background. You're taking the viewer in much further than if you just do a, a corner or still life. So it has quite a sense of depth about it and light. What about the one on the right, the closed door? Little different feeling with this one. Um, again, lots of stuff going on in this room. There's like three mini sections. There's the woman reading in the foreground. There's the set table in the background, like it's almost lunchtime. And then there's a chair and a pillow and some stuff on the right. So there's a lot of stuff going on in this one. Is there a story here? Anybody want to venture into the story? An accountant, maybe? Um, no, there's a skull and a, there's art materials in here. It looks more like a doctor's office or something. It does. Maybe it is a doctor's office. Couldn't tell if that was an easel on the floor. Anyway, there is a story there. I don't know the artist. The colors. It's pretty subdued except for these green walls. Everything else is pretty monotone. So the green walls certainly add um, a feeling about it. This one, I don't think I could find the artist's name either. Some of these I found on Pinterest. Uh, lots and lots and lots going on here. Um, is there an invitation? To me, it's just too cluttered. I just <laughs> it's very busy. It's very my, busy. My eye can't hit on any one thing. It's just mm -hmm. jumping all over well, the place. Well, okay, I must be different because my eye is hitting on the the couch. The way it's lit, it's like inviting to come sit down on the couch, and I I don't see the rest. I just see the couch. Yay! Isn't that interesting? How different we see. Um, yeah, me too. I, I see the couch, the pink. And green colors are real soft and inviting. The rest of it's really busy uh, and feels overwhelming to me. The doors are inviting. They, it, it's a pretty day outside. It's maybe spring, Paul. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's, there's greenery out there. Uh, there's some mail sitting on the sofa. So that maybe is, oh goodness, I need to sit down and go through the mail. We all have, that's a shared experience, right? Uh, a stack of mail that needs to be read. Um, this next one, this is called Sarah's Sink by Nigel Fletcher. This reminded me of my grandparents' house growing up, uh, the bathroom. It just really instantly, instantly connected with me. Their, their bathroom faucet, I think, was like this in Old Hickory in that old 1930s house uh, or 20s, whenever it was built. And then my grandmother sewed. Um, she taught me how to sew. So that one also kind of connected with me, the sewing machine. One, Peyton Hall, it's called by Susan Ryder. She had a lot of beautiful pastel type interiors, um, very soft and feminine, very appealing. 
I think to women probably more than men. A stronger structure would probably appeal to men more. Um, the one on the right is looks maybe like a Russian. I can't pronounce that name if I tried. But here's the open window, um, the loose curtain that looks like it's almost blowing, gives you a little bit of movement to it. So as you think about setting things up, it's real easy to set up a window. I used to do that in the studio uh, and have that set up for my morning class because the, the sunlight came in that, that east window uh, really beautifully in the morning. But the trick was you had to paint at the same time every day <laughs> to get the same lighting. So you'd have to give yourself about a 45 minute window to sit and work each day. And a potted plant is gonna last longer for you than uh, cut flowers would if you wanted to stick some flowers in the window. Uh, jump in there if you have any thoughts. The, these are very different feel, these very impressionistic. This is Ann Blair Brown on the left and Don Whitelaw. Um, living rooms, dining rooms, open windows. Um, as I was helping students a few years ago on some houses, maybe even for you too, Teresa, we were thinking about how to handle the windows from the outside when you're painting a house. Um, it's a little easier when you're inside looking out because you're obviously not going to be painting a room at nighttime, most likely. So you either see the beautiful blues and greens of, of the outside scenery or like on the, on the left here, it's just warm and yellow light, which on, when you're painting houses, you know, Thomas Kincaid always put that little warm yellow light in the windows. So somebody was home. If you put black windows, if you're painting the outside of a house, it's not very inviting. It's like, nobody's there, it's dead, there's no life in it. So these are things I don't know if you think about, but when you're faced with making decisions on paintings of homes from the inside or the outside, there are a lot of decisions that you have to kind of tweak yourself because if you take a photo of a house, um, you may or may not have good options for what to do with those windows. Here's some more windows uh, with beautiful soft curtains and light coming in. That seems to be a theme to have the white lacy type curtains. Um, another one, this is um, a pretty famous interiors painter, Carl Wilhelm Holsoy. Um, he's mentioned in that video, that YouTube video that I mentioned, but just catching her um, Rembrandt lighting here, the light catching her on, on her right side, a plant, which kind of gives an element of life, uh, furniture. You know, you got a lot of contrasting things going on here. You've got uh, metal pot on the table, wood, lace, plants, a person. Um, a lot of things going on here. Really high contrast painting, uh, bright colors, real sh sharp. Now, I don't know about you, but when I'm um, trying to paint dappled light or strong light, I tend to keep overcorrecting it because it feels too harsh. It feels like it's a blob of paint. So on these types of paintings where you have bright light like that coming in, you have to get way back from it before you, you, you paint it back out because it feels too awkward. Uh, this one on the left is by Patrick William Adam. If you're interested in interiors, he, that was one of the things he specialized in. And I found several paintings by him. And I also found an article on his life and a little bit more about him. Uh, but like I said, it was hard to find much in the way of instruction on painting interiors. People just kind of sat down and did it. The one on the right, you can tell that um, Roizen O'Farrell used a yellow tone. You see that yellow popping through everywhere? And just it just looks like it's painted with a palette knife, pretty much. Very impressionistic. And the yellow, you know, a warm tone, especially on a cool um, painting, a warm tone glows and kind of adds little, little fireflies um, to the piece. So I kind of look for that to see what, what is the mother color? What is the unifying color that, that helps lead you around the painting? Um, more, this is the one on the right by Paul Schulenberg. 
the what would you say the mother color is on this one? Can you tell? You see evidence of an undertone. Boy, I got a quiet bunch today. Yellow. I see yellow uh, like here on the top of the, the chair. I'm always curious as to how people, their techniques. And so I see a lot of yellow on top of the frame here on the left um, over here. So there's some glowiness that's tying it all together because the, the objects themselves are mostly cool or they've got cool light coming in. So it's nice to do a warm and cool thing um, when you're trying to decide on color schemes. And that's hard when you look at a situation and you go, okay, what color would I paint underneath that? Or what color would be harmonious with that? Uh, same painting, I'm sorry, I have it in here twice. But um, like Amy was saying, these, these chairs and sofas are inviting you to come and sit down. The colors are just very inviting also. They are. This, this next uh, uh, painter, Elena Katsura, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong too, but I've, I've followed her a lot. I've seen a lot of her paintings and she's very good with color. Here's some more of hers. Very, um, and, and you can see how a lot of it's just scraped on. It's not painted real heavily, uh, but the colors are very relaxing. And I think for interiors, uh, I say this often, but I remember Joel Knapp telling us it's very hard to sell an orange or a red painting because they're very, those colors are jarring. They're not, and I had, when we moved here uh, out on the carport, they had a orange and yellow um, cushions on the table out there and a rug that was full of orange and a big love seat that was bright orange. And I, it's not that I hated it. I just, I didn't like it. So I've changed it all to this blue and, and turquoise color out there just because those colors make me feel so much. When I sit in the carport, I want to relax out there. Yeah, Denise. Um, that, the one on the right, mm -hmm. it says it's done in acrylic. Look at that. Uh, well, all those lost edges, I know. you know, it's like, I'm trying to figure this out. <laughs> I know but there's really some beautiful edges there and yes. especially done in acrylic you know I'm impressed yes me too I, because that that's challenging Paul I know you work in acrylic sometimes too um, and just using something to slow your drying time down and spraying and but maybe this is really small well it is it's 12 by 9 so you can work a lot faster with small brushes and a small canvas with acrylic and I know you do that as well Denise um, yeah but you have to at times keep that little mister bottle handy just to mm -hmm. give the canvas just a quick misting it helps a lot for the movement yeah that's right that's right and maybe your finger and just and definitely working fast which some of us do better than others uh, these next few are bedroom interiors <clears throat> Connie Hay Hayes is a well-known painter in Maine so she's up near you Paul and I wouldn't even try to I know this brace girdle is the last name um, but look at the difference in the two this again is that hot color um, gotcha Denise you just log off when you need to um, hot warm color that's just lit it up like a fire which can give you a feeling of warmth uh, versus the cool, um, uh, you know, very, very cool with warm windows out there. Just just a different contrast. That's what I said. I know that one that was on the right was more inviting. It's like was I'm it? ready to go into that room. Yes. Well, it also says something about time of day. So this is, this is nighttime, time to go to bed. This is morning, probably time to wake up because typically morning light is cooler. Um, and you see the dappled sunlight outside. So different times of day. So, I mean, you're telling a lot of stories and you have a lot of decisions to make when you, when you do this, when you set something up. Um, books on the nightstand, a little cup of tea. The lamp is on. The only way you know the lamp is on is by that orange glow around it. So again, that's, that's an interesting way to convey that message because otherwise it would look like morning I would think that the light on the pillows would be a little warmer though. So that's kind of throws me off a little bit. Another one by Elena 
um, it looks like the same. No, looks like the same lampshade, but I guess not. And then this next segment is kitchens um, and bathrooms. So, you know, do you ever think to just do your kitchen sink um, and just watch for light patterns and watch for times of day when the light is. Um, I love this one on the right. I had to go look up her work, Kim Kogan. Um, I thought this was just really beautiful, beautifully done. It's very simple and very soft. Another kitchen sink and bathroom, um, water running. I shared in our last class uh, about how to use your iPhone to capture running water. Uh, and there was a uh, iPhone school website that you can go to and they share tips. And one of them was how to set your iPhone to capture running water and get that beautiful um, effect of the running water. So you obviously aren't gonna sit there with your water running all day while you're painting. This little bathroom painting, I thought had beautiful colors in it. Uh, just a lot of interesting colors. It's just color, color, color everywhere. Soft pastel colors. This one on the left, uh, another Susan Ryder is very busy. Busy, busy, busy. Obviously the mother color is blue, it, but it's, it's, it's a set table. And so it tells a story there. So you just might be more aware as you're, going through your daily life of where there's paintings everywhere. There's potential paintings everywhere. So this, this one looks like a restaurant window to me for some reason, I don't know why. Um, it, it's hard for me to figure out what's going on right here. That post seems to come forward into the table. But again, you know, restaurant tabletops, Here's more dining room settings, formal dining room or versus a little tea, uh, tea time picture with French doors open. You know, and when you go visit places like Cheekwood, we have Cheekwood here, you know, the Biltmore, places like that where you can take photographs. You might plan your visit during a time of day when the light is good and you could get some really beautiful images of you know, houses that you visit as well, because most of us don't have big French doors like this with the roses out the, out the doorway. This one, I'm going to kind of move us into porches, and I think this is the segment where I'll move us into porches here in a minute, but just stairways are a real common thing to invite people to another place. Uh, the light on these stairs is really beautiful, and I just love the way it's painted, but the, the top is kind of dark, so it's leading you into a dark doorway, which Maybe if this was a little lighter blue, it would have a better feeling to me. I don't mean to critique Trish Adams' work. Uh, it's painted very beautifully, but just thinking about where you're going when you're invited in. in. In contrast, this one is inside the house going out maybe into the garden. And because it's lit, it feels a little more inviting to me. These more paintings of this is sunshine in the living room. Um, and these are all women reading or sewing. And a lot of them are from the back. This one is from the front. Uh, most of them, all of them have in common a window for that natural light. And obviously when the things were painted in 1800s, mm -hmm. um, they, they relied on natural light or candlelight. So um, just the, they all, these all have a real different feel. This looks like kitchen, maybe. That looks like a stove. Sewing machine with that beautiful uh, landscape out the window. A little sitting room there. Another window, Alice Mumford. I thought this one was, was pretty. That red cloth is so powerful, though. It tends to want to take over the whole painting. Uh, it's about the red cloth, though. So, again, you have to remember when you have a real powerful color in there that that's going to take the show it's going to be the Marilyn Monroe of the of the painting uh, more subdued old master type of painting lots of browns 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 um, Coley or Collie Wisson beautiful soft impressionistic light 
most of the, a lot of what I found had windows, 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 windows are the, are the, uh, like eyes are the windows to the world. Well, windows invite the viewer to look out and see uh, beyond. Uh, the one on the left is a Russian painter and uh, the Russian painters have certain um, clarity to their colors and brightness. You can almost always tell a Russian painting. Have you guys noticed that? Just mm. by the way they're painted. Um, just the air must be, be different, uh, obviously different there. Another Russian painter. Funny how we have different thoughts about Russian paintings now, don't we? Goodness. Um, two more, a chair, a window, all of these have in common the windows. Just going to move us on through. Stop me if you see anything you want to comment on. I just can't get over. I'm imagining just a vast quantity of time spent on something like this market scene on the left here. Yes. Tremendous amount of time in there. Yes, I mean, uh, unless you're just, you know, if, if you've trained yourself to paint plein air and paint fast, um, I can see that, you know, going a little bit, bit faster. But, you know, some people say they spend a year on a painting or, or years on a painting and come back and forth. But yeah, definitely different. All of them have that feeling of time the one on the right was titled Vermeer's Street Discovered I don't see a signature by Vermeer but you you all probably know that painting of the street scene that Vermeer did with the blue uh, this is supposed to be I think inside one of those buildings I don't know if it's a Vermeer but it was interesting the cat or if it's a little dog maybe it's a little dog with pointy ears and that same painting on the left Here's a hallway painting, um, which is kind of busy. It's got a little, uh, it's called Peter Brown, Moses Back from His Walk by Peter Brown. Interesting way, you know, if you're going to do a dog portrait, interesting way to capture, um, you know, your pet or somebody's pet, you know, in a daily routine. I went to this lady's website because she had a lot of really beautiful things. Leah White. Um, and so this next few are porch paintings. So, you know, if you have, if you have, we have a wonderful big porch on this new how, old house, new old house. Um, it spans the whole length. It has big, huge 150 year old columns on it. So it, it definitely gave me some ideas to get out there and do some porch, but I'll have to look, it's on the north side. So I'll have to look and see how the light is. But the, the coffee cup and the book are very inviting the old metal chairs from the 50s that we remember we all have probably some memories of those and here's just a few kind of uh, decorative type of porch paintings but they're all very the rocking chair is a common theme they're all very inviting um, here's some ladies in the chairs this is by Ernest Lawson mm -hmm. here's here's one that you'll recognize by Frank Benson on the left and then Dennis Perrin, who's a, a, a modern painter now that I see a lot of work from him. It's called View from the Porch. So that's another, you know, you can either go outside and take a picture of the, or do a painting from the outside in, or you're looking from the porch out. Same with windows. It, it's interior versus exterior. Very beautifully done. Um, and all, you know, the common theme on these is lighting is, you, you know, you want to pick a time when you have beautiful light, you have patterns of light and shadow. This is an old one by an artist called Philip Leslie Hale uh, out in the yard, um, looking in at the house. And I'm always interested in the colors that are used on white houses, because, you know, you don't want to just squeeze your white paint out. Um, blues and yellows uh, on this white here it even maybe looks like there's a blue underpainting with the warm yellow and green tones obviously going to have yellow and green because of all the grass so one of the painters that we did a video series on a few years ago um, John Potoshnik and I believe he's up your way Paul he 
uh, it looks like P-O-T-O-T, Potochnik is what it looks like. But he actually built a foam core house out of white foam core and put it outside to see, because he was using a photograph of an old house. And he put it outside in the grass to see what colors would be reflected before he chose his. He went to a lot of trouble to decide on a color scheme for a white house. <laughs> Very interesting um, prep work to do sometimes. Another porch painting. This one's called the back porch. But look at the lighting on that. Isn't that beautiful? Nail Amolkova. Amolkova. Um, it's either a street light or sunlight coming through there. Kind of hard to tell. Another porch painting on the right. Um, I hope these are helpful. They're just a lot of different. I mean, if you get online and look, this is Marilyn Samandel. This is the last segment I'm ending it up. Um, I did a painting. Um, I did include it in here. I did a painting of hers a few years ago just as a study, even though she's a living artist. It's just for me personally because I liked it. Um, but she's a very loose, loose painter, paint, paints very impressionistically. And here's my version. I couldn't find this painting. Um, it's it's kind of harsh, but it's a porch painting. It's very inviting to me and I, I have it hanging in my house. Um, here's another one of hers from the inside out. And you see the, the foreground with the chair and the table, the doorway, the porch, the sidewalk, the fence and the water and the mountains. So look how deep that thing goes. A, a wonderful um, series of steps to, to invite the viewer. The end of the sidewalk is lit. It's not dark back there. So it pulls you all the way in and around this corner. We know that S curves are real important. So she's taking you around the corner with this fence here. Uh, a couple more of her paintings. They were all very small thumbnails, so it was very difficult to find a good image of her work, but um, I, I do uh, admire her work. There's that same painting again. So that is what I have as far as the gallery walk. Um, this exercise, and you can do that on your own. Um, I, I went through and found a couple of shots that I had taken at our other house before we moved. Um, I just, I had done that for studio purposes and I'm so glad I did because all of that is gone. Our whole house got renovated. It's all white, all modern, no, no color anymore down there. Somebody else, four houses down. Um, but I'd have to go in and tweak these paintings. You can't really see the, the chair. Um, but there were just a couple of things that I, here's a little closer shot of the table. And I thought, well, these are things that I might eventually want to put in one, my sketchbook. The, the others, I went through my old painting, my old photographs and found some old photograph, family photographs. Sorry, I'm getting my husband's lost something here. Okay. Um, this was a, one I found of my grandfather and his two sisters, my two aunts. And um, I thought, what a cool, what a cool drawing that would make. Um, this is also my grandfather and his sister and then a neighborhood boy, I guess. And I've, I've seen this picture before, but I just noticed they're holding bunnies. <laughs> They've each got, uh, the boys have two bunnies and the girl has maybe two as well. Um, but I thought, what a fun, fun picture. Um, other pictures I found were, this is my third birthday or second birthday has my mom and my uncle here on the left. And, you know, I never just really looked at it. Oh, there's potato chips in a bowl and some paper plates and old timey stuff in the 60s. And um, I thought, wow, I need to do some sketches of these things. Um, my great, great grandfather back in Elmwood, Tennessee, they owned the post or ran the post office and owned that building. And this is my great, great aunt. Just some interesting old pictures that I found my sister and I in the backyard when we were little and I was looking at this old type of, of lawn chair and I remember that swing set and the laundry hanging. Just different things. Honestly, after watching that video, um, my, my uh, 
creative spirit was was sparked. So um, I hope that what I've shown you today might give you some ideas and help you go back and look through what you have to see if you have some interiors or narratives. Good to see you and I'm gonna, um, gonna go down to a Thai restaurant and meet someone. And the last time I was down there back in December, they had a picture in, in the Thai restaurant and I asked them if I could take a picture of their, um, their picture. And he said, oh, sure. And then you painted it. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that's awesome. So I had fun doing that one. That was an interesting one. Wow. I'm gonna be meeting somebody down there very shortly here for lunch.